Welcome to the Houdini Pod. I'm your host, Franklin Oliver. Thank you for joining us today. We're living in an age of tremendous upheaval, transformation, and turmoil. And I've talked about my hopes for this kind of period before in numerous ways on this podcast. And so far, though, they've mostly been indirect and impersonal. Sometimes it's my poetry, sometimes it's been politics. And once I even shared my reflections on this time period as the new civil rights movement. And I'll post links to some of those episodes in the show notes. Today I want to do something different and read something very direct and incredibly personal. Those of you who know me well and know me personally may have seen the story I'm about to share when it appeared on my blog or maybe even via Michelle Norris's race card project. I was proud to be featured there, along with so many other stories, focusing not on theoretical issues of race, but the real-life experiences of living in a multiracial society. I'm putting this story into the podcast for the first time, in part because it fits so perfectly with the larger moment, in part because some folks have asked about this story recently, and in part because it may help someone understand how very real the specter of police brutality feels. See, there was a moment a little less than six years ago, soon after Mike Brown was murdered in Ferguson, when I really thought we might be making big strides toward the moment we're living in today. There were lots of steps taken in those days, but... I think we've discovered that they were the warm-up, not the jump. I'm incredibly thankful that we're making the jump now. Here's what I wrote then. In a moment, you'll hear Ferguson and Jake. Today, I'm glad my son is white. That's a phrase I never thought I'd write. In part, that's because I identify so much with black culture and black history. It's also in part because, as a black man, raising a white boy is extremely complicated. Please understand, life at home is as simple as can be expected with a teenager. I'm incredibly fortunate that Jake is a wonderful young man, But life out in the world is filled with constant reminders that our family is jarring to others. We're jarring to servers who felt they needed to ask everything on one check, even when Jake was in elementary school. We're jarring at the bank when the teller needs help from a manager to authorize Jake cashing a birthday check from a grandparent. We've been jarring at the mall, convenience store, park, or any of the other dozen times I wondered if someone were ready to put out an Amber Alert, fearing for Jake's safety because he was with me. We were jarring the time I got pulled over and very aggressively harassed because a cop saw Jake sitting in my back seat while we drove through a white neighborhood. Jake's whiteness has been a constant hassle. In one important respect, though, Jake's whiteness has been a real blessing. I've never given him the talk. Of course, we've had the sex talk because I'm the responsible dad of a teen. But we've never had the cop talk. Some of you know about the cop talk. That's the one when young people of color learn the do's and don'ts of interacting with the police. They learn what kinds of behaviors to change which places should be avoided, and what poses to assume. My son doesn't need to know any of that. If anything, I would say that Jake is wary of the police because of how they've treated me, but he doesn't live in any real fear of the cops. And I'm so glad he doesn't have to. Jake will get the automatic benefit of the doubt when it comes to cops. That reality makes a huge difference in my life. And the last few days in Ferguson has made that more clear than ever. His inherent, wait for it, white privilege means that when I'm worried for my son's safety, 
It's about driving or alcohol or sex. At root, I worry about Jake having a problem based on something of his own doing, having trouble because of a choice he makes. I worry just because he's my kid. But I don't have to worry about Jake being in the wrong place, at the wrong time, in the wrong skin. I don't have to worry that he'll be Mike Brown or Amadou Diallo or Ezel Ford or Eric Garner or Sean Bell or any of the murdered others. I don't have to worry that someone with a badge might decide to kill my son. Today, I'm glad my son is white. Thank you for listening. As always, we appreciate the conversations we can have at Houdini Pod on Facebook and Twitter. If you like what we're doing, please give us a helping hand. That means giving us five-star ratings, subscribing to the pod, and sharing our podcast with folks who you think might appreciate it. It can also mean financial support if that works for you. We appreciate it all. And we appreciate whatever it is you're doing to make America a better place. Till next time, remember to do good and be well. Thank you.